What's up guys? This is Jigs Crypto and welcome to my channel. All of the links for the news are in the description below if you want to check it out. Also, make sure to like the video to help the channel. It also helps people to discover our videos in this channel. Now let's take a look at our daily crypto news. So, first up is coming from CryptoSlate.com. Ethereum spikes 12% following completion of Go Early Testnet merge. Right? Um, as we highlighted from the article, Ethereum is up 12% and trading at around 1,886 following news of the successful completion of Go Early Testnet merge. So, as we know, um, I know a lot of those that are into crypto are monitoring. Uh, the prices um, daily and yeah, as of yesterday there's a uh, great pump with all of the tokens bitcoin ethereum alt altcoins you know um, and highest for um, ethereum uh, went around 1900 plus dollars so yeah maybe it's because of this but but yeah it's not just ethereum was uh, the only one pumping Yesterday, uh, everything, all of the tokens are pumping yesterday. So, continuing with the article, Ethereum's ETH Go Early Testnet completed its merge with the proof of stake consensus mechanism in the early hours of August 11. So, there's a tweet that uh, we also grabbed from the um, article. So, it's coming from Sasol that ETH. Um, he said that. The Go Early Testnet has been successfully merged and is now a pool proof of stake chain. And next up is finally, open close parenthesis, um, the Ethereum mainnet. So we're, we are all um, um, anticipating the ETH 2.0 this coming September. So he also said the merge is coming with a <laughs> Panda em uh, emoticon here. <laughs> Um, so yeah, um, it's a good news for Ethereum. Um, continuing with the article, I also highlighted from the article, Go Early is one of the most active Ethereum testnet. The merge was completed around 1.45 UTC after terminal uh, total difficulty TDD exceeded 10,000, uh, sorry, 10,790,000, right? Um, Go early, sorry, um, this is a duplicate here. <laughs> sorry about this. But uh, we have more here to read about this. So continuing with this one. There's another tweet uh, that we also grabbed from the article. Uh, thank you from Crypto Slate. Um, this is coming from Marius Bander. Uh, I'm not sure how to, how to pronounce that. Um, and we finalized on go early so he said there was some confusion on the network because of two different terminal blocks and lots of non-updated nodes uh, so we didn't finalize earlier we're still looking into what's happening but so far it looks quite good all right so there there were some little hiccups but uh, i know i know they're looking into it and probably resolved it um so uh, as i said here uh, but it wasn't without some minor issues. Ethereum developer Marius Bandel Derwijen. Um, comment down below if I pronounce it right. Um, and then he said, there was some confusion on the network. So as I said here, with up two different terminal blocks and lots of non-updated nodes. Um, however, Wijen added that the developers were looking into what happened. Right. So with the success of the early testnet merge, the likelihood of the final merge happening in mid-September has grown significantly. So, um, there's been some news that um, E2.0 will be launched around September 15 or September 16. So, that's why it's saying you're mid-September. So, the Ethereum Foundation called the event the most significant upgrade in the history of the blockchain network. <laughs> right? Um, that's good news. Um, going to our next news here, this is coming from you that today, Cardano critic Mark Cuban gets sued for promoting collapse crypto broker, right? 
We highlighted from the article, billionaire and Dallas Mavericks NBA club owner Mark Cuban is being sued over his promotion of the now bankrupt crypto broker Voyager. The lawsuit filed um, in South Florida denounces Cuban for engaging ex inexperienced investors in using Voyager's services while recognize the extent of the quality of the company's assets and collateral. In addition to the billionaire, the class action lawsuit filed by Moskowitz Law Firm, also calls uh, Voyager CEO Stephen Ehrlich to account. So hoping I, I'm pronouncing the names right. Um, continuing, recall that crypto broker Voyager was on the verge of collapse after the hedge fund of Three Arrows Capital which had a significant share of the broker's funds, went bankrupt. So millions of people's funds worth several billion dollars were blocked and unavailable, unavailable for withdrawal. So cash withdrawals from Voyager accounts were supposed to be allowed today, August 11, but there is no information on the process yet. So currently, 3.5 million people's funds worth 5 billion remain blocked in the crypto broker. Um, Mark Cuban has not yet commented on the lawsuit. Nevertheless, in the last week, the billionaire made a number of statements on the topic of cryptocurrencies where Cardano blockchain was hit particularly hard. So first, Cuban said that Cardano has not had any impact on the industry during its lifetime, given that Cardano smart contracts have been up and running for a year. They have not posed any uh, challenge to the industry, uh, the entrepreneur said. So moreover, according to Cuban, Dogecoin as a platform for smart contracts would have more potential in this area than input-output project. All right? So <laughs> uh, maybe we'll see more news uh, regarding this. Uh, on my next news, um, We'll see if um, um, Voyager opens up their um, withdrawals. So we'll, we'll cover that in the next news. All right. Next, this is coming from business.inquire.net. Binance says it's, it is winning crypto clients thanks to inflation. So as we highlighted from the article, Binance, the world's largest Cryptocurrency exchange is seeing a surge in clients due to rising inflation and a historically strong dollar that has depressed emerging market currencies. An executive told Reuters on Wednesday without disclosing numbers. So, continuing, um, now that we are seeing inflation ramping up worldwide, um, we are seeing that more and more people are seeking cryptocurrency like Bitcoin. As a way to protect themselves from inflation, as quoted, said by Maximiliano Hinz, who heads Binance in Latin America during an interview in Lima. Also, um, in the article, Hinz pointed to the example of Argentina where annual inflation of, uh, is at 90%. The country has grown into one of the company's top markets, he said, together with Brazil and Mexico. Also, Argentina saw citizens pour savings into Bitcoin this year despite a crash in cryptocurrency prices. So probably a lot of people are seeing this a buying opportunity. The last big dip from May to June. Um, so they, they probably they saw it also as an opportunity. Uh, while El Salvador has made headlines for adopting Bitcoin as legal tender, um, Heinz, said other Latin American nations have yet to pass meaningful cryptocurrency legislation. Although he does not necessarily consider that a bad thing for the company. Right? So that's good for Binance. Um, not financial advice. Don't quote me on this. Or if you want to invest in crypto and you want to use Binance as an exchange um, or, or as a trading platform, um, in the description below, um, you have my referral fee, or sorry, <laughs> referral fee, my referral link. Um, I, I, I know both of us will have some uh, benefits uh, when you use my referral code uh, below, all right?
quick segue on there. <laughs> Um, next news is coming from CryptoNews.com. Crypto exchanges Hotbit and uh, Bitfinex um, faces regulatory headwinds. As we highlighted, China-based crypto exchange Hotbit has suspended withdrawals after its assets were frozen due to an ongoing investigation. So meanwhile, Tether's sister company uh, Bitfinex is ostensibly facing legal investigation in the US. So, two more, <laughs> two more changes facing, um, you know, regulatory sanctions, probably. Continuing with the article, Hotbit announced Wednesday that it has suspended trading, deposits, withdrawal, and funding functions due to an ongoing investigation into a former employee. The exchange said that a number of its senior managers have been um, subpoenaed by the law enforcement without identifying the jurisdiction. It added that law enforcement has frozen some funds of Hotbit, uh, which has prevented Hotbit from running normally. According to its website, Hotbit is registered in Hong Kong and Estonia, with most of its staff handling from China, Taiwan, and the United States. All right. Um, continuing with the article, meanwhile, um, Bitfinex, a cryptocurrency exchange owned and operated by iFinex, which also owns USDT issuer Tether, is apparently facing a criminal investigation in the United States. According to a Department of Justice reply to a Freedom of Information Act or FOIA request. So the request which asks for information pertaining to Tether Holdings Limited. Um, its parent company, iPinex Incorporated, and its uh, subsidiaries uh, was denied by the DOJ on the basis that production of such law enforcement records or information could reasonably uh, be expected to interfere with enforcement proceedings. All right? Um, next is coming from BitcoinMagazine.com. Um, Philippine Central Bank halts Bitcoin crypto services provider approvals for three years. All right. Um, we highlighted from the article here, the Banco Central, Central Bank of the Philippines will close the door to all virtual asset service providers or BASPS seeking a license to operate in the country starting September 1 per an announcement from the bank. So the BASP that have submitted an application and completed the second stage of approval prior to August 31 will still be processed and considered for approval. Additionally, BAS previously approved will be able to continue operation and submit for renewal as needed. Um, however, if applications do not meet the final stage of requirements from the central bank, by August 31, the window for approval will lock shut for the aforementioned three years right um well this three years hopefully it still changes um uh due to you know i know we're still at the early stage not really at the early stage probably still a lot of people are getting educated with cryptocurrencies nowadays so we'll see probably this will still change meanwhile if a bus looks to expand its operation, including non-custodial services, it will need to have a rating of stable composite from the Banco Central of the Philippines Supervisory Asset Framework. That's a long one. <laughs> and be currently listed as uh, a supervised financial institution. Indeed, financial regulators have become is increasingly wary uh, since a market contagion swept through the broader cryptocurrency ecosystem as financial institutions face liquidity crisis uh, crisis and bailouts become a regular conversation conversation some nation states have taken measures in an attempt to maintain consumer confidence right so i think this is uh, just our con country here in the philippines for banco central making sure that um um you know they they keep it you know, um, level um, for the risk level here. 
uh, regarding you know um, digital assets. So in spite of regulatory pressures, the Banco Central recognizes, at least in part, that there is a wide demand for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. In fact, last year, the central bank released a survey showing that 53% of the country's population, or 36 million people, were unbanked. All right? Um, next is this coming from bworldonline.com. Um, this, I think this will be, we'll cover this in a three-part here. Uh, so let's start. Use of blockchain um, crypto in Philippines may grow further. So we highlighted from the article, the adoption of blockchain technology and cryptocurrency is likely to continue, continue growing in the Philippines as people explore more of its use in the financial infrastructure. All right. Um, Filipino-led blockchain startup Tetrix said in an interview with Business World that ownership of digital assets may increase as people become more educated about these technologies. Uh, the crypto ecosystem has grown so much over the past years and there's a greater demand for building high thoroughput, thoroughput applications like gaming, NFT, non-fungible token, marketplaces, and media apps on cost-effective blockchains. Uh, Tetrix Chief Executive Officer Eman Nabalan said, all right. However, the limitations between blockchains are forcing users to pick which one to use over the other. Tetrix aims to bridge that gap. Um, Tetrix creates a way for many different blockchain networks to seamlessly communicate with each other, he added. So as quoted, uh, another quotation, potential applications of blockchain are limitless, ranging from storing client identities to handling cross-border payments. Clearing and settling bond or equity trades to smart contracts that are self-executing, such as a credit deri derivative that pays um, automatically if company goes bust, or a bond that regularly pays interest to the holder, he said. So, uh, established in 2020, Datrix aims to change the way blockchains are designed, utilized, and developed for digital space, right? Um, maybe we will see, sorry about that, we'll see more um, news regarding Tetrix, but yeah, this is a good article. Continuing with this one, so within the article itself, um, the BSP has been working on a pilot project to test the use of wholesale CBDCs. As you know, yesterday or the other day, we um, covered some news regarding CBDCs, like Australia doing some pilot uh, testing regarding it, and I know other countries, hundreds of countries are also um, looking into CBDC. So I, I, right now, um, BSB is doing a pilot on it. So use of wholesale CBDC for large value financial transactions among selected institutions. It wants to focus on the wholesale aspect of CBDCs as it expects this to have a bigger impact compared to retail use cases. Um, the project covers areas including policy and regulatory considerations, technological infrastructure, governance, and organizational requirements, legal matters, payment, and settlement models, um, reconciliation procedures, and risk management. That's a lot. <laughs> and the BSB recently said it is on track to conduct a pilot test for its CBDC project by the port quarter. All right, we're heading there. Um, continuing, so Mr. Nabalan said CBDCs can provide the central bank easy access to digital solutions. It can also facilitate faster cross-border transactions as users can directly send digital versions of fiat money. Okay. However, he raised some concerns about the project and urged the BSP to be more specific and clarify limitations for CBDC use. Right? As quoted here, can it be used by anybody like a regular peso what are the certain limitations would you allow them to really transact that in all industries these are the things that are being questions in europe especially in the united kingdom so mr nabalan said also quoted here uh, we have to have clarity 
the government should have support the idea of not just cryptocurrencies but web3 in general because what drives cryptocurrency is actually the technology that comes with it because the technology allows trust all right he added um so web3 refers to the decentralized web and includes both decentralized applications and decentralized finance web3 also includes cryptocurrencies assets or tokens right last quote here without the technology cryptocurrency will just be trading sending assets and nothing more to that right so just trading there's no use cases into it but nowadays um using you know web3 uh there's a use case uh to it right uh that is something we wouldn't want to be in moving forward because that would mean you have less adoption less collection and everything is going to be inefficient mr nabalan added right uh, we'll probably cover that uh you know something educational regarding web3 i'm not sure if we're going to do that in this channel or my main channel go go to my uh, other channels i have my main channels there's others some youtube projects that i'm also um doing but not really focusing right now so focusing on this daily news on our um jigs crypto channel project and also on our main channel uh for our blogs right um next is coming from sunstar.com.ph Cebu City moves closer to using crypto coin, right? This is good. The Cebu City government will soon be using a recently developed crypto coin. Wow. As a way to promote cashless payments at City Hall. This is good that we're, uh, they are recently developing, you know, their crypto coin. Uh, this is after city officials and proponents announced that CPAS Incorporated, a Cebu-based joint venture, that has an existing memorandum of understanding MO or MOU with the city government to develop a stable coin. Wow, stable coin for use in financial transactions. Um, has entered the third stage of Banco Central Filipinas betting process for virtual asset service providers. So that is the I think that's the acronym for the one that we're talking earlier in another article. So BAS, right? Once the process is completed, CPAS Incorporated will begin to issue its stablecoin C peso and launch its app-based and web-based electronic wallet that will enable users to purchase, send, receive, and swap cryptocurrency and fiat money, explained CPAS Incorporated Treasurer Charlie CEO. Um, right, this is good. So if it's a stable coin, you don't have to worry about in um you know, volatility, uh, it's almost the same as the value of the peso, right? For example, in USDT, USDC, it's almost the same as the fiat currency for USD, right? So it uses the same system employed in Korea and has a one is to one crypto to fiat value, meaning one C peso is equivalent to one peso, all right? So that's good. So it is not affected by currency fluctuation or inflation, as I said. Um, because it is stable, the value of the coin does not change regardless of currency fluctuation and inflation, right? This is good. Hope this gets to the final stages and gets, you know, to launch their app-based and web-based electronic wallet, right? Hoping for the best. This is a good move from Cebu City and hopefully other cities here in the Philippines will also do the same right and well i think that is our last news so yeah don't forget to smash the like button you know and subscribe and hit the notification bell to get updated with the latest videos and this is jigs crypto signing out